Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Good News Today. I am Simi Pasha. Our first story this week comes from West Bengal where a state karate champion taught a lesson to two men who thought they could get away by harassing a young woman on a lonely street. Munna Das showered these men with blows, forcing them to flee for their life. Indrajit Kundu with our top story. A 16-year-old girl returning home alone in West Bengal's Madhyam Gram was targeted by two drunken men who reached out to accost her last week. But this was not meant to be one of those regular molestation incidents that ended with the girl's sad plight. The attackers were at the receiving end of kicks and blows, courtesy the Braveheart, who is a state-level karate champion. वो तो पीछा करते करते मुझे अटैक करने की कोशिश की बहुत गंदी गंदी बात किया और मुझे बहुत ही बुरी तरह से मुझे छेड़ने की कोशिश की और मुझे मतलब इप्रिजिंग किया तो मैंने उन्हें अटैक किया और मैंने उनका गला दबा के उन्हें छेस पंच किया नोस पे जैसे मैंने हिट किया तो उनका नाक से ब्लीडिंग होने लगा तो मैंने ऐसे उन्हें मार मार के भगा दिया हर लड़की को अपना प्रोटेक्शन खुद करना चाहिए क्योंकि हर जगह तो पुलिस रहना पॉसिबल नहीं है ना और हर एक लड़की को अपना प्रोटेक्शन खुद रखना चाहिए मुन्ना दास इज अ स्टेट लेवल चैंपियन ऑफ द स्पोर्ट एंड हैज वन टू गोल्ड मेडल्स दिस ईयर समथिंग द टू मिस क्रीन्स डिड नॉट नो शी ग्रैब्ड वन ऑफ देम बाय द स्क्रफ ऑफ हिज कॉलर एंड रेन ब्लोज ऑन हिज फेस एंड किक्ड हिम टिल ही फेल डाउन ब्रीथिंग इन पेन मोर ब्लोज फॉलोड ऑन बोथ ऑफ देम एंड दे स्टार्टेड टू फील ब्लीडिंग मैं खुद फोर्स में नौकरी करती हूं फोर्स का एक हिस्सा हो लेकिन लड़के लोग के ऊपर जो छेड़छाड़ी हो रही है और दूसरी तरफ दूसरे जब छेड़छाड़ी करते हैं उसका प्रोटेक्शन करने के लिए लड़की लोग भी अपने आप आत्मरक्षा कर रहे हैं लेकिन दूसरे क्या हो रहे बड़े सीनियरी जो माँ चाची की उम्र की आंटी लोग बोल रहे हैं क्या मत करो बाद में फिर तुम्हारे ऊपर अटैक होता है क्यों होगा हम लड़की है मम पापा भैया इसके ऊपर कि वह हम लोग सेल्फ डिफेंस रहे हैं खुद के आत्मरक्षा खुद करना सीखना चाहिए और मैं खुद फोर्स में होकर बोलना चाहती हूँ हर लड़की को सेल्फ डिफेंस होना चाहिए क्योंकि हर मुश्किल हर रास्ते में कहाँ कौन सी घटना घट सकती है किसी को पता नहीं चलता According to locals, the two men are habitual offenders who have been at it since many days. But Munna was visibly upset about the fact that the bystanders did not come up to help her at the time and some even discouraged her actions saying they might just come back to trouble her more after this. वहां पे जब लोग आए तो मुझे बोला भाग गए जब तो आसपास के जो लोग थे वो मुझे बोल रहे थे कि तुमने ये ठीक नहीं किया तुम्हें ये नहीं करना चाहिए था क्योंकि उनका एक बड़ा गैंग है तुम जब जाओगे तो वो तुम्हें टारगेट करेंगे वो तुम्हें नहीं छोड़ेंगे। एमोन छोटे-छोटे टेक्निक है जो प्रत्येक के सीखते पड़े एक जन षाट बल षाट बचर महिलाओं शिखते परे पंचाश बचर महिलाओं शिखते परे एवं एक दस बचर मे शिखते परे भेरि सीम्पल टेक्निक जो अनेक कि देवा जाए और सब बड़ कथा काराटेटा शिखले कि मन सहस बाढ़े एत सहस तरह मध्य चले आसे मैं कि बोलब बाट इवन दो इट्स बीन अ उक द गर्ल हेज लंच इन ए फायर उद मध्यम ग्राम पुलिस स्टेशन एंड स्केचेस अफ दफेंडार्स हाव बीन ड्रन द पुलिस are yet to nab them with Indrajit Kundu in Barasat West Bengal bureau report India today Now to a heartwarming story of a woman who met her biological mother for the first time days before her 42nd birthday. Nilakshi's father had committed suicide when she was barely 6 months old and her mother had been forced to give her up for adoption to a Swedish family. Here are glimpses from her homecoming. 42-year-old Nilakshi Elizabeth Jorindel is ecstatic. The reason after 42 long years she could reunite with her biological mother. Now sitting in her posh hotel room in Pune browsing through pictures recollecting the emotional moments she spent with her maternal family in Amravati district. Yeah, but staring, you know, this woman is so beautiful. I was like, wow, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And I couldn't keep my eyes off her. 
all the time when I was spending time with her, I just had to look at her. Nilakshi's reunion with her mother happens three days prior to Nilakshi's birthday and this is the best gift she could ask for. When she was six months old, her mother had to give her up for adoption because her father had committed suicide. A Swedish family adopted Nilakshi in 1976 and since then she has been staying in Sweden. But when she was 10 years old, she started thinking of tracing her real family. This after her teacher asked her to make a family tree. Knowing that she was brown and different from the European friends, she did not make the family tree. Instead, she started tracing her real family. Oh, in school, uh, there was a moment where they were saying that we could uh, make a family trees. Mm. And I was thinking, uh, that is totally useless for me, mm. because I'm not related to these people, for real. So I was thinking, why should I do that? Nilakshi works in a charity store in Sweden. While she was with her mother, she touched her like a baby, held her hands for hours, making her mother emotional. The last moment when uh, it was, we have to leave from that place, even her mother also need to leave. And then uh, Elizabeth broke down. And she was not understanding what to do. Then she uh, took her this uh, sari and then trying to holding her, wiping her face and miss, asking her not to cry, not to cry. And, and then I, I also started crying because it was too emotional, everything. And that was beautiful. Nilakshi took her mother out for shopping and spent two days with her. Although language was a barrier, their emotions could be caused in their eyes. Now Nilakshi has decided that she will take care of her mother and fulfill all her financial requirements. She has also decided that she will regularly visit India to meet and spend time with her mother. Nilakshi Elizabeth feels that it's a miracle that after 42 years she has finally traced her biological mother. And after getting to know the real reason of her separation, she has decided to do her bit for her roots. That is to bring in help from Sweden for the upliftment of farmers of drought prone Vidharb. With cameraman Gopal Harnidhis Pankaj Khilkar in Pune for India Today. Now to a story from a state that makes headlines every day because of increasing instances of crime against women, murders, decoity and corruption. Even though the Akhilesh Yadav government seems to be doing precious little to change the situation on the ground in Uttar Pradesh, there are a few good Samaritans who are doing their bit to make a difference. Here's one such story about a group of industrialists in Chandoli. This is a corruption-free industrial zone. Each of these factories have it written outside their walls that they do not believe in giving bribes. Things were very different three years ago in the phase two of Ramnagar industrial area in Chandoli. Nothing was possible here without an exchange of bribe, but industrialists decided otherwise and their efforts slowly started to change this area. मेरा एक तो प्लाट जो है यूपीएसआईडीसी से ट्रांसफर करवाना रहा जिसका साढ़े तेरह लाख रुपया मांग रहे थे सन 2003 से मेरे को दौड़ा रहे थे अभी तक वो ट्रांसफर नहीं कर रहे थे साढ़े तेरह लाख रुपया मांग रहे थे हम लोगों ने तय किया कि एक पैसा नहीं देंगे और बहुत दौड़े बहुत दौड़े हुए पर उसके बाद में तब फिर संस्था के मार्फत से हम लोग भी उस संस्था में भी बहुत परेशान भय परेशान होने के बाद अब मेरा प्लाट जो है बिना पैसे का ट्रांसफर हो गया जितने भी स्क्वायर मीटर की प्लॉट होती थी ना सौ रुपये स्क्वायर मीटर के हिसाब से हम लोगों से वो अलग से सुधा शुल्क लेते थे और जैसे हमारे साढ़े चार सौ स्क्वायर मीटर का प्लॉट था तो पैंतालीस पैंतालीस हज़ार रुपये हो गए लमसम तो उन्होंने लेकिन हम लोगों ने वो एक रुपये भी नहीं दिया और वो काम हमारा बिना जो है पैसे के हुआ बिकॉज ऑफ द करप्शन चार्जेज इनिशियली इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट लेफ्ट दिस एरिया Local investors came forward, and with their no-bribe approach, soon they started to change the face of this entire zone. Today, there are close to 150 factories set up, and nearly 50 of them have already started production. गर्व के साथ कह सकते हैं कि हमारे यहाँ कोई भी कार्य करना एक बहुत आसान है उद्यमी 
एक मामूली एक ड्राइवर को भी आप कोई काम विद्युत विभाग में भेज दिए विद्युत कनेक्शन लेना वो उसको मिल जाएगा बाट माह विभाग या कोई भी विभाग हो आपके कार्यों में कहीं से भी कोई दिक्कत नहीं होगा ये उत्तर प्रदेश का एकमात्र एक ऐसी धरती है ऐसा इंडस्ट्रियल एरिया है जो कि आज के दिन में हंड्रेड परसेंट करप्शन फ्री इंडस्ट्रियल एरिया है इंडस्ट्रियल इन दिस एरिया ट्रेंड ऑफ करप्शन फ्री इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे From Uttar Pradesh to Kerala now where a young boy helped save the life of a baby elephant. This 6-year-old Jumbo slipped and fell into a ditch and got separated from his herd. Now it would have been stuck there for days had it not been for this young boy who heard the elephant's cries and alerted forest officials. Take a look. <laughs> A baby elephant trapped in a well in Kottamangalam, Kerala, struggling to find its way out. Forest officials believe that the 6-year-old elephant may have been part of the herd of 8 jumbos seen by the villagers last night. The desperate cries of the baby jumbo was heard by Anandu, a local who informed villagers. The villagers in turn informed forest officials and then started a 5-hour marathon rescue operation. A narrow way was dug out for the baby elephant to escape. കഴിഞ്ഞ രാത്രി ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഉറമ്പിൽ വന്ന ആനയത് എട്ടെണ്ണം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ആ ആനയാണ് ഞങ്ങൾ ഓടിച്ചപ്പോഴാണ് ഞൂട് വന്നത് ദ ബേബി എലിഫന്റ് വാസ് സ്ലൈറ്റ്ലി ഇഞ്ചേർഡ് ബട്ട് വെന്റ് ടുവേർഡ്സ് ദി ജംഗിൾ ആൻഡ് ഇസ് അണ്ടർ സർവിലൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ ഫോറസ്റ്റ് വാച്ചേഴ്സ് ടിൽ ഇറ്റ് ജോയിൻസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഒറിജിനൽ ഹേർഡ് ബ്യൂറോ റിപ്പോർട്ട് ഇന്ത്യ ടുഡേ യു ആർ സ്റ്റിൽ വാച്ചിങ് ഗുഡ് ന്യൂസ് ടുഡേ Now can you imagine a movie set where the director sets up a scene gives directions to his actors says action and cut via Skype believe it or not hollywood director randy kent is making a canada film exactly like that pratibha raman reports from the sets of road king rolling action meet hollywood director randy kent He's on Skype chat from California in the US. And if you hear him saying action and cut, don't be surprised. He's actually directing a Kannada movie Road King over Skype. We had done all pre-production with him through Skype. I was like, why can't we shoot? So I asked him, I was like, uh, can we do this? He's like, man, I need 5 minutes to think about this. This is kind of crazy. So we did a demo and it worked. Not that it was planned this way. The American filmmaker faced visa issues in coming to India and so Randy decided to enter the Kannada film industry virtually. A simple cable from the camera monitor to the laptop connected the entire cast and crew of the film. Sometimes what used to happen is that okay you know we're traveling and you know we're in rural areas and we don't have internet coverage there in certain parts of it. So what we used to do is we used to record a clip then find a place where there's internet and then play it back to him. And then he would say no, go back and shoot it again so we would go all the way back, shoot it again, you know, come back. What started as a bizarre idea a few months ago became a fun experience. He's just like this. He doesn't know. So most of the times we know he's listening. But there have been times when he's like doing that same pose and we go around explaining the entire thing to him and in the end we're like Randy Did you hear that? And he's stuck. So it's basically he's not heard anything, and he's we think he's hearing, and he's actually seriously listening. But in the end, we have to repeat the entire thing again. This movie, Road King, is said to be dealing with the obsessive ex syndrome, and is scheduled for release early next year. We're also told that during the making of the movie Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, the director reportedly called the crew members and explained the entire shot over Skype. The crew followed the orders. But this is a first, the entire film being shot through a video call option. With camera person Madhu Pratibha Raman, Bengaluru, India Today. Now to a beautiful story from Kerala with the railway staff at the Ernakulam railway station has come up with a unique way of recycling discarded water bottles and using them to keep passengers from crossing railway tracks. 
the end result will take your breath away. Revati Rajivan reports. As you enter the platform of the Aluva Railway Station in Arnakulam district of Kerala, a neat row of bottles with colourful flowers hanging on the trail that separates the tracks welcomes all. It's a result of the recycling idea that struck the railway staff a few months ago. Used mineral water bottles thrown away by passengers were picked up to grow little table rose plants. Railway needed to stop people from walking across the tracks and the bottles placed in between served the purpose. We have to prevent the trespass of the passenger from on platter number 1 to 2. This is a daily practice. Every day, everybody is trying to trespass directly, trespass the line, not using that food over bridge. That is why, how to prevent this one? That is why we are uh, trying to prevent this trespass. Or and my HI, health inspector, uh, said, uh, told me that uh, it is very easy, sir. We have to provide that the bottle plantation. The bottles collected by the cleaning staff are painted yellow or white and then they are filled with organic manure. Table rows that usually is in full bloom at 10 in the morning are then planted in these bottles. Passengers are the happiest lot. Amused at what they see during their travel, passengers often inquire about the idea and return home inspired by it. I have travelled over so many railway stations for my official work. So this is first time I am seeing this type of cultivation or plantation, something like that in a new model. And uh, it is adaptive for our home also. And it is very decorative and uh, not even seen in a railway station, I can say. This decorative recycling idea was an initiative of the health department, RPF and other railway staff. It has added colour to the station and has forced people to use the footover bridge or at least cross through the sides, which is less risky. Aluva Station was awarded the best station in South last year. With this initiative and its presence on social media, Aluva Station breaks the stereotypical image of Indian Railways. Putting these waste bottles to good use and saving you from these dangerous rail tracks, Aluva Railway Station sets an example. This hanging garden is a lesson of recycling, households, offices and other railway stations are sure to follow. With camera person Sijo, Revati Rajivan in Alwa for India Today. Our next story comes from Tibet where archaeologists have restored a centuries old stupa. It took the team close to seven years and historians believe that this effort will help them retrace ancient ties between India, Tibet and China. Here's that story. <laughs> After over seven years long effort, a lost Ashoka stupa has been finally restored and renovated in Tibetan town of Nangchen. Hundreds of years old Ashoka stupa, one of the 19th erected by Emperor Ashoka in China, was unveiled for public after religious ceremonies on Tuesday. Ashoka was uh, the, the biggest and uh, very well-known Buddhist king of India. And of course, all over the world, I think his name is very well-known. And uh, so we are very proud of ourselves and myself, obviously, very proud of myself to be able to sort of do a little bit of contribution to the Ashoka remain. Forgotten by time and ravished over centuries by Mongolian invasion and communist cultural revolution, this is a lost Buddhist link that binds the histories of India, Tibet and China. It is believed that over 84,000 stupas 
were built during the reign of Ashoka, each housing relics of the Buddha. It, is, it can be a very good contribution towards to that sort of uh, Mr. Modi's uh, uh, wish. And uh, I think that will be, I mean, I hope that will also be sort of like a, a beneficial. On Tuesday, the stupa was consecrated by Galwan Drukpa, a Buddhist leader from Ladakh, who began the restoration effort in 2007. Local monks say the stupa fell into ruin when the rain came under Genghis Khan's Mongolian invaders. Later, it was targeted during Mao Zedong's cultural revolution in the 1960s. But locals came together in Nangchen to protect the relics, hiding them from the Red Army. This restored stupa in Nangchen on the border of Tibet and Qinghai in China is just one of 19 stupas that were believed to have been built during the time of Emperor Ashoka in China. This is the only one that has been till date recovered and the hope is that this difficult and complex process of restoration will just be the first chapter in writing a new page in India-China relations. Reporting for India Today in Nangchen in China, this is Anand Krishnan. That's all we have time for, leaving you with some stunning pictures of Pluto beamed back by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft.